The Whirly left lead delivery system is an upgrade to all of the systems that are on the market for many reasons, and those are the reasons or the things that we're going to cover in this little demonstration. The first part of the Whirly system is the contrast administration kit. Basically, it's a TUI with some syringes, a reservoir syringe, and a control syringe, and this allows for the assistant to manipulate the contrast and put wires, 014 or 035 wires, through this TUI um, while the physician can, can maintain his hands on the catheters to manipulate and do what he needs to do there. So this piece connects to a couple of parts of the system that I'll show you in just a moment. The vital uh, mainstay of the system is this coronary sinus guide. The CSG is a very soft 9 French inner diameter catheter, has a specific shape, and the shape can be changed when we insert this braided core, which I'm going to show you. So the catheter itself is very soft. This braided core that goes inside there is a similar shape, but it it's, has metal braids that allow it to torque this catheter and manipulate to cannulate a coronary sinus. So I'm going to just show you how that works. So I'm going to insert the braided core in here and show the marker band that's right here. The marker band correlates to the tip of the catheter, so as the marker band reaches the hub, the braided core extends out of there. We can change the shape by pushing this further in or pulling it, pulling it further out, and in that way we can kind of manipulate to cannulate the coronary sinus. We know the coronary sinus is a posterior vessel and it goes backwards, and so typically we're going to be using counterclockwise torque to try to cannulate once we get the braided core into the right atrium. And we can see that as I turn this with my fingers. If I go counter counterclockwise, it's going to go posterior. If I go clockwise, it rotates to the anterior where we're typically not going. But that's how it, manip it, it is uh, manipulated. Okay. So I currently have a coronary sinus guide in our model into the right atrium right here. And I'm going to insert that braided core at that point and with this model I'm going to show how this this cannulates and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this back I'm going to insert this coronary sinus guide and now I'm going to use some push-pull technique to cannulate anatomically it would be a posterior structure but for our, our model this really works well so once I'm in I can I can put that braided core into the coronary sinus here and then I'm going to advance the CSG over that and at that point and actually prior to that the nice thing about this contrast administration kit is it can be hooked to there to puff contrast to kind of show that we're in the right vessel etc and once we're done we can just remove the braided core typically at this part of the procedure a venogram would be shot by the physician using a balloon or sometimes not but we're there and what that allows us to do is to identify the vessels here and we're going to we're going to say that this is a great posterior lateral branch that is going to be our target vessel. So once we get to this point, the next step is we're going to take the LVI. And within the LVI package comes two catheters. The first one is the LVI itself, which stands for lateral vein introducer. This is a 7 French inner diameter catheter. It has a very soft atraumatic tip, and it has a braided uh, shaft to this. Okay. Also in the package, along with the slicing tool, comes this purple catheter. This is called a vein selector. It's braided, it's 5 French, and it has a really soft tip, but it's also very, very torqueable. And it really is designed to select veins, which is why we call it a vein selector. This is the standard shape. It comes in the package with the LVI. There are two other shapes, a vertebral, which is a uh, less angled catheter, and a hook catheter, which is a little bit more angled. But this catheter, according to the uh, Dr. Worley, this will basically take care of about 90 to 95 percent of your your cases. Okay. So from here, what I'm going to do is actually introduce the vein selector into the LVI. It's a, the easiest way to put this in because it is pretty soft. Is to go right along one of these little. Uh, indentations on the side here. If you try to go this way, it's a little tougher, but this way it will get through the valve relatively easily. Okay, and there it goes. So I'm going to introduce this just to the tip of the 
LVI as shown here. And it gives it a little bit of body, so just to the tip, and then I'm going to introduce it into the coronary sinus guide, and it usually goes in pretty easily once it's got both catheters together there. Okay, so, and I'm only going to advance this LVI to the tip of the coronary sinus guide because really to get into that vein, so just to the tip, so I'm going to pull it back just to the tip there. The way that I'm going to, I'm going to reach this vein is with the vein selector. So I'm going to advance the vein selector, and you can see how torqueable this is. It's really great. And I'm going to actually ad advance it, maybe past the vessel, torque it, and then pull it back. And there it goes. There it engages. And just when I'm, in, when I'm engaged there at this point, what I'm going to do, actually what I'm going to do here is I'm going to connect the contrast administration kit that I previously had connected to the braided core. Remember this little, little guy here? It connects to the end of the purple catheter. And from here, I'm going to take an 014 floppy wire and I'm going to put it through this valve that comes with the contrast administration kit. Okay. And once you look at the tip of the vein selector, you're going to notice the 014 wire coming out of there. There we go. I'm traveling in, inside that posterior lateral branch. Very, very nice there. And at this point, I'm going to, I'm going to advance the vein selector, which is going to track over that wire rail that I've created. And it's going to go deeper inside that posterior branch. Well, now I have the vein selector tip as my rail, and I'm going to advance the LVI right over that very easily. It gave me a ton of support. So that's what I need to do. So at this point, I'm going to remove the vein selector and maintain the wire right where it is or in the vessel as I pull this all the way back carefully trying to maintain the wire. And once I get to the end there, I can just grab the wire and pull that off there. And at this point, I am ready to introduce a pacing lead right over the wire. And it's got so much support with that LVI right here that uh, pretty easily is going to go in there. So let's see. If... So I'm advancing the pacing lead now right over the 014 wire. And I'm going to have my assistant put a, grab the end of the wire, just holds, holds the wire there. And then I can basically just advance this right through the valve. And the pacing lead is going to just really nicely go right through the LVI and right into that vessel. And as we look, there it goes. And the pacing lead is there. And at this point, what we're going to do is the, uh, they'll test the lead, make sure all the numbers are good, the thresholds are fine. There's not phrenic stimulation. And there we have our pacing lead in a posterior lateral branch of the coronary sinus in a great position. And we are going to replace the wire and we're going to put in a stylet, or some companies call it a finishing wire. And we're going to put it all the way to the end just to give some stability to the lead right before we slice away the, the LVI. One of the many benefits of the Whirly system is the ability to slice the catheter in a really stable way. Historically, EPs have had a lot of issues pulling back a lead when they go to slice the, the, the inner catheter or the outer catheter. With the Whirly system, it's a, there's a great advantage here because we're able to, to slice in a way that keeps the lead in place and the anxiety that all physicians feel when they uh, go to slice the catheter uh, hopefully goes away. Uh, the background on this is that after spending 45 minutes to two hours placing a lead, nobody wants to pull that lead back, so they have to redo it. So in this system, the way that it works is we only have one type of material to cut through instead of the hub, etc. So we're going to basically break the hub. We notice the little V-notch there that's very handy for the 
uh, slicing tool to engage there. The flange on the front of there just kind of fits right in front there and it, we have to engage it by putting some pressure against here and you can kind of feel it engage like this. I'm going to pull back with my left hand and give it a little bit of tension just to keep this LVI straight and I'm going to have my assistant hold the hub of the CSG. So just slight pressure to keep this straight then I'm going to slice all the way forward so that the flange mates with the hub of the CSG like such. The first move I make from there is to take my index finger and place it over the LVI and hold it against the slitter. That really uh, adds to the stability of this system. And uh, not just a little bit of pressure, but actually put some pressure on there to keep it there. Then what I'm going to do with my other hand is I'm going to remove the lead from the LVI where it's been slit and I'm going to place it in the slot of the slitter and I'm going to hold my thumb right over that very firmly and very close to the LVI as you can see right here. Okay. At that point, with my assistant holding the hub of the CSG, I'm going to go ahead and take the tab of the LVI and I'm just going to pull straight back with uh, one nice long motion. Not super fast, but also you know not super slow um, or intermittent to maintain the lead right where we put it. Okay, here we go. And we're done. There's the lead. The lead is exactly where it was before. We remove this and then of course all we need to do is remove the CSG which is very simple. The first thing we want to do really um, is just pull it back to the hub of the lead and at that point my assistant is going to hold the lead because this material is so thin that he can actually squeeze the lead inside the, the CSG and then we just break. Let's see, there we go. And then just slice down. And once again, ease back the lead, or excuse me, the CSG, keeping the lead in place. Do it one more time. And then the final time, and this should probably get the lead or the CSG out. And we've got the lead right there, and there we go. We're done. Lead didn't move, all is good.